Now, there's been a lot of discussion around what Nintendo could do with their next platform, the dubbed Switch 2, whether it's visuals, backwards compatibility, uh, maybe the, the gimmick itself and what Nintendo will do there. But there is part of the equation that I, I was interested in seeing how people felt, specifically around the idea of digital distribution of games through a marketplace that's been, well, lacking since day one, I would say, on the Switch. But going to the next platform with Nintendo that we assume will have a new UI, we could probably assume that there would be a new eShop that would come along with it. And so today... I thought we would take a look at the current eShop, as I mentioned that I would attempt to browse it again at some point. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to the like button and subscribe if you're new to the Spawn Wave channel. Though let's, let's head over here. This was, remember, a story that came up with Nintendo and DNA. They have this joint venture company called Nintendo Systems, and it appears that it's going to be focused on, as they say, creating a system that makes it easy to deliver Nintendo Entertainment to consumers. Now, this can be within the the game console ecosystem, as well as outside of that with, say, uh, your phone, right, or on your computer, anything uh, in that regard. And I'd like to think that this is Nintendo realizing going forward that we will the world is going to become more and more digitized when it comes to uh, video games in general, right? But even moving forward, trying to connect all these different uh, avenues, whether it's through phones, other theme parks, and other places, so that it's all under this Nintendo systems umbrella. But I hope that would also mean that they have in mind, okay, when it comes to delivering games to our systems digitally, uh, we can improve that a bit. And <laughs> what what ends up happening with me, all right, when I go to the eShop now, I don't even browse it. I go there knowing what I want, and I just put it into the search bar, end up waiting a while to get there, but eventually I do. And in fact, the eShop, as it stands in that regard, it does function, technically, right? So if I'm not going to the eShop to browse it, I probably don't even mind its current setup, but there was a point in time where I actually would go to the eShop and attempt to browse it and try to just legitimately discover stuff in their digital marketplace. And, well, I haven't done that in a months now because it was such a pain to do it before. So I figure we'll take a look at it now. And here we are over on uh, the Switch. I was playing Pokemon Trading Card Game earlier and then... Quake 2. Hey, Quake 2, if you're going to search for a game to pick up on the eShop, I can recommend that one is a, is a very good game. But let's launch into the, the eShop here. And I am curious if this is something that is on other people's mind when it comes to Nintendo with their next platform. Because obviously most people are discussing, well, the next system in terms of its hardware and games and all of that. But I would say the eShop is uh, is a key element if you consider the fact that it is the way that we are able to get our games. And with the world going more and more towards the digital side of things when it comes to games, well, it's going to become very, very important, especially, I would say, in the next generation. So what I remember with the eShop, when it first came out with the Switch, uh, we didn't have that featured section at the top from what I remember. And it seemed like Nintendo added that in for, I don't want to say curation, but trying to put the better games in front of you because it's uh, it's ugly in the recently releases or coming soon tab, which we'll look at. But I think if you stick to like the feature tab, it's, it's fine. I mean, you have like your multiplayer sale at the top. They have some of the bigger releases they're trying to put in front of you, like Pikmin 4, there's D Disney Illusion Island, obviously the Pokemon games, the DLC, there's Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and then just a whole slew of, Okay, there's everybody wants to switch, but a, a whole slew of uh, other games that you know might be kind of interesting. Red Dead Redemption, for example. There's Quake Two and different sales and just bundles of games. So in that sense, the feature tab it actually works pretty well. But when you get down to the recent releases tab, it is I mean just a free for all. And people have pointed out there's some questionable content on here. I think it's just because Nintendo legitimately doesn't really care that much about what goes on the eShop and that's good in some cases because then you don't have like weird censorship stuff and things that happen but it's also bad in the sense that it is just I mean littered with some junk shovelware and this is something that Sony had to deal with with their PlayStation platform to where 
wow, it is, it is, it is a mess where the games were showing up that weren't really games. They were more or less ways for you to press a button and pop a trophy. And what happened was Sony decided to bury those games in, in the store. So they still kind of existed, but they were incredibly difficult to find. And in this case with Nintendo, a lot of these games are pretty much front and center. Couple that with just how slow and unresponsive the eShop can be. I, yeah, when you scroll too fast, it has to load stuff in. But then randomly, as I'm just sort of moving around, it'll just kind of stop for some reason and just almost like freeze for a minute. And something else I noticed, this has been mentioned, the longer you browse the eShop, the worse the performance gets. Now, it's my understanding that basically it's just loading up a web page that's sort of disguised like to be an app within the Switch. But whatever's going on there, it is uh it is it is rough. Here's another good game, Gravity Circuit, which I had to scroll pretty far and unfortunately this game's been kind of buried on the eShop and what's funny is on the PlayStation 5, this game was actually placed like front and center. And it is a really good title if you like the older Mega Man, specifically Mega Man X, I would say. We also have Trails into Reverie next to Swords and Bones 2. And Paintball. Let's take a look at Paintball here. It looked very much like one of those old Flash games from Newgrounds. Fast Downhill Bowling. Look at that. And what's interesting is I noticed that some of these companies, this is Entity 3. If I, I bet you if I look them up, Entity 3 Limited, if I look them up, a lot of times what happens is they just have a lot of these very basic looking titles that are just strewn about on the eShop for a dollar or two at the most. So for example, here are all of Entity 3's offerings on the Switch. And you see kind of a, a common theme here. They're very basic games that look like flash games or mobile games and they're just a dollar each and sometimes you'll see these companies pop up they'll make a lot of these games and they'll put the well, for a while they were putting them at like uh, three or four dollars and they would discount them 90 percent and the reason for that is because with the discount it would actually shoot them up the charts uh, when it comes to some of the sales and different things Nintendo would try to push in their more curated sections, they kind of cut down on that a little bit. And it's probably because it was getting flooded with uh, spin path or tile flip. And I actually don't have any problem with companies attempting to put games on any of these digital storefronts. It's more the issue of the digital storefront not necessarily being prepared or able to handle a lot of this stuff, whether it's the eShop's performance or Nintendo's inability necessarily to sort through some of these and they just say, whatever, we have a featured section. Here's the recently released section, go crazy. Now I will say Nintendo has uh, at least done some work to their great deal section. As I mentioned, we were at a point where you kind of gain the system a, lit a little bit by just discounting your game heavily and it would kind of end up sort of in this deal section near the top but Nintendo has since sort of fixed that but still it, it there's not great separation necessarily and it also has the again the loading issue although I have been browsing this for uh, about seven or eight minutes now so I the system can only do so much I mean really at this point the two sections to stick to is probably featured and best sellers just because you most likely won't end up with any of the shovelware stuff on there although download only games at one point had I, I think that the clock game or the clock clock application in there and again that's just because I guess the discount and people were buying it as a as a meme I'm I'm not really sure but even if you look at the coming soon section uh, it, it's basically the recent releases, just games that haven't come out yet, that same sort of format, whenever it's ready to load. There we go. So that, to me, is the biggest thing Nintendo should be looking into when it comes to their digital-facing offerings for this, is just trying to figure out how to present it in a better way. I mean, I guess for people who are really into this stuff, obviously plugged in heavily, already know the game that they want, they'll just be able to come to the eShop, go up to search and never touch any of this other stuff, right? You just punch the game and you want there, you download it, and you're off and running. But I will admit, the kind of the the state of the eShop has sort of made it so that I, I don't really feel like going on the eShop at all. And that's actually a bad thing for a lot of the smaller indie developers and publishers that maybe would rely on Discovery. I think it's something that Nintendo, because they're going to their next 
system, we assume in what holiday 2024, they'd probably have a clean break from the current setup with this UI, this eShop and all of this. And your Nintendo account, as they mentioned, would be carrying over. Then I assume be able to interface with the newer eShop and would bring your digital purchases with you, um, at which point you'd hopefully be able to recreate all of that in a better environment with a new marketplace but that is kind of on Nintendo to do at this point it's odd because the reason that the UI is so stripped back technically is because they want the speed of it but that doesn't really hold true for the eShop I just don't really think they care much about its setup because it hasn't affected any of their software sales anyway so I guess what's the point in revamping it completely maybe that's something they're saving for the next generation but I guess we'll find out in time if they're taking the eShop seriously. But let me know what you guys think about all this down below because I'm sure there are many people who don't really mind the setup for the eShop and that's fine. But I am curious for people out there who maybe would browse the eShop if the state of it, the performance, the the lack of, uh, of curation, if any of that's put you off from even opening the store and going past the search function. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.